Hello, my name is Eric Putkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about after enlightenment, there are still dreams and sleeping. I was kind of surprised that this uh, popped up, but it popped up with a couple people. And it seemed to be pointing towards in reference to, I guess, some teachers or somebody had said or taught that after enlightenment, you're ever conscious um, through the three states of waking, dreaming, dreaming, and deep dreamless sleep. I think this is a uh, misunderstanding, perhaps. I don't know who originally said it or what they're really saying, but this is a attachment and fixation on conscious awareness because conscious awareness is of the body. And there is also subconscious awareness, which is aware of more, which is also of the body. And this is the awareness of the senses of this body, and it gets tied to memory. And it is a mistake to, to fixate and become attached to conscious awareness and think that after enlightenment, you're going to have some kind of conscious awareness that's ever conscious through all the states of waking, dreaming, and deep dreamless sleep. I mean, after enlightenment, you're suddenly not going to become consciously aware of the workings of the thyroid gland and the appendix and the pancreas and everything else. Why would you suddenly become consciously aware in all the, uh, you know, the various states of, of uh, you know, waking, dreaming, dreaming and deep dreamless sleep? It really doesn't matter whether there's conscious awareness or not because you are not conscious awareness. Conscious awareness is of the body and you are not the body. We need to cease identifying and being attached with that which is of the body and conscious awareness is one of them. And so after enlightenment, there is no conscious awareness during the day and the conscious awareness remains when you're laying down in bed and the conscious awareness remains when you're still dreaming and you. And, you, and, and because it's of con a continuous conscious awareness, that means you would still be consciously aware of your life and the waking world and all the dreams and memories or all the memories and things of the waking world would still be in the dreams. And then you'd still have a conscious awareness and deep dreamless sleep and you'd just be sitting there in the void, ever aware. That is a fiction. I don't know where that came from, but it is not true. We are consciousness itself. And consciousness is ever conscious. <laughs> and what they mean by this is when you wake up in the morning and somebody says, did you sleep well? And you go and you and you just feel, yes, I slept well. Well, there's a feeling even through not remembering your dreams, even through deep dreamless sleep, there's a feeling. Yes, I slept well. How do you know? because you were conscious. There was consciousness there. <laughs> it's not conscious awareness <laughs> in terms of ever being aware of objects. That's not what they're talking about. But there is consciousness there in that I know I slept well, even the parts that I don't remember. <laughs> there is some teachers that talk about a fourth state that's beyond waking, dreaming, dreaming, and sleeping. It is that that is consciousness through the three states. But it is not the same as conscious awareness, like the body-mind has conscious awareness. It's not like that at all. I, I don't know why so many people keep trying to attribute special abilities, powers, differentiation, specialness to people that have awakened as if once you're enlightened, you no longer sleep or you no longer dream. Why not? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with sleeping and dreaming. Enlightenment does not interfere or obstruct sleeping and dreaming because you are consciousness and as consciousness, it is ever conscious. <laughs> not as a conscious awareness. It's not, the, the, to say you're ever conscious is not in the same way that you are consciously aware now. 
perhaps it's more akin to you are conscious in the same way you are subconsciously aware of so much more that you're not consciously aware of. <laughs> because in, uh, you know, psychologists and scientists have found if, if somebody's put under hypnosis and you get the conscious mind out of the way, you're able to recall details that the conscious mind was not aware of. You might not have attended, you might not have tried, you might not have really seen, but subconsciously the awareness is far more deep and complete and so you're able to call details that the conscious mind cannot. And in that way, consciousness is ever conscious in that it is conscious in the subconscious, what, are you, what you're not consciously aware of. Just like when you wake up in the morning and go, I slept well. You might not remember dreaming. You certainly went through deep dreamless sleep. And yet, there, although there's no memory of anything that happened last night, you feel and know that you slept well. <laughs> Why? Because there's some inkling from the unconscious awareness that is coming forward to the conscious mind to let you know you slept well. You might not know the specifics of how well you slept. That's all still part of the subconscious awareness, perhaps. But you're not consciously aware of how well you slept, but you still feel, I slept well, because there is consciousness through the entire time. There is consciousness because you are consciousness itself through the entire time. But that is not to say conscious awareness the entire time. It's not like the conscious awareness that you have now of this body and mind, the experiences, the memories you have, will continue when you lay down in bed and when you go to sleep, you're still aware of the waking body's memories and understanding because the conscious awareness has continued. And then in deep dreamless sleep where there's no objects, you're still consciously aware but just floating along in the void. That's not what happens. <laughs> after enlightenment. That is not what happens. There is not this constant state of conscious awareness. That is not the point. That is being attached to the idea of conscious awareness and identifying with conscious awareness. But conscious awareness is, as I've said in other videos, is of the body. You are not the body, and so you are not conscious awareness either. You are consciousness itself, even the unconscious or subconscious awareness. And so, you are ever aware and conscious through even the subconscious awareness. <laughs> so I'm hoping this sheds a little bit of light on, on the idea that after enlightenment, it's still perfectly fine to dream and even sleep, or sleep and even dream. Not to say that you can't point out some saint or yogi, you know, maybe something out of something like a autobiography yogi or some other text where they maybe talked about a sleepless saint that no longer sleeps. Kind of like an autobiography yogi, they, they talked about a, a woman saint that stopped eating and hadn't eaten anything in 30 years. Um, similarly, you could probably find a story of some saint or yogi that sees sleeping and hasn't slept since some period in time. I'm not saying that couldn't happen. What I'm saying is, it would be incorrect to then apply that and say, all enlightened people must be like this. All enlightened people must be able or should give up sleep. <laughs> That's not the point at all. Similarly, there are cases and, and uh, examples of stories of yogis and saints that have ceased sleeping because instead they just meditate. They, they have learned to meditate in such a way to give the body and mind complete rest. And so they no longer need to sleep. They just meditate instead. But that is not a sign of enlightenment. Many of those are not enlightened. So again, you, you can't assign that to ones who are enlightened and say, well, you don't need to sleep, so they don't. That's not the case. After enlightenment, you are perfectly okay sleeping, and even dreaming. It's not an issue. It does not change the fact that there's ever consciousness there. There's always 
a consciousness, that which you are, regardless of the state of waking, dreaming, or sleeping. And so that is, I'm hoping, clarifies this. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please post below. But until next time, thank you much.